It all comes down to this. As the face-off of the construction site does not go the way the kids had hoped, forcing them to plan one last rescue mission before heading out of town permanently. Not that Joan and the parents are necessarily going to let them get away with things that easily. It's the season one finale of Runaways, episode 10, Hostile. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to our final review of Season 1 of Runaways. So, of course, lots of spoilers ahead. Alright, Episode 10 picks up right where Episode 9 left off with the face-off at the construction site. Kids versus parents ready to fight to try and save the city. That's the plan, at least, though things don't go exactly the way the kids had hoped. I mean, first off, we get the dinosaur trained by Dale. He created the dinosaur. He's prepared for it. Knows the dinos with Gert. So, I mean, a little bit of thinking ahead right there. Uh, then we get Jonah showing up, uh, which definitely outclasses the kids pretty instantly. I mean, there's sort of a momentary fight before Jonah just balls up and... Boom! One blast and knocks everyone back. Uh, and there is the concern, is he just going to take out the kids right then and there? And I think that that's a fair concern, which is why Tina came up with her staff to try and stop Jonah, who of course isn't having any of that. There goes the staff, and it's one last face-off uh, between what really ends up being Carolina and uh, Jonah. Mom, uh, dad and daughter facing off right there. Though, Carolina doesn't really know that quite yet. Uh, might be able to start guessing how things are for, sort of laying out at this moment. But she tries to get everybody else to leave. Run, I will cover you. Your standard hero sacrifice, which the kids sort of have to do uh, at this stage. They can't, uh, they, 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 they can't, there's nothing, they, they can't fight up against this particular group. Um, so it does get them to run for at least a half second to get away before Nico appropriately. I mean, she is bonding with Carolina right here. I mean, a friend also. Doesn't just have to be because of relationships here, but I'm sure that's an additional motivator to like, hey, we don't leave any of us behind. And I think this is going to be the, the motto coming forward right here. We're stronger as a group. We don't leave anybody behind. Um, but the last little shot between um, Jonah and uh, Carolina, well, you got two light beings going head to head. An EMP, an electromagnetic pulse, does seem to be a, a, a natural result of such an encounter, which they have. Takes out the cars, takes out the fistigons, takes out everything. Um, all they can see is that the parents are on their way towards them, and that is forcing them to run. And at this stage, I think in a way we're really just setting up for season two. We are finished the basic story, the connections, the relationships, uh, the dichotomies uh, uh, between all of these, the, the parents and the kids, and that here we're setting up the runaways, the kids taking off on their own. And that's sort of pretty much what we're setting up here for the rest of this episode. So we've got the kids trying to cross Los Angeles on foot. They got no cars, a little power out of the area. They've got a dinosaur in tow behind them. Thank God you can get shopping carts and blankets, I guess, pretty easily. It's the only way to hide a dinosaur from everyone in public. Um, but Griffith Park, perfect place to go, surrounding Griffith, Griffith Observatory. Acres and acres, huge wooded areas, perfect place to hide kids, perfect place to hide a dinosaur, perfect place to make your next plan. Gotta leave town. Well, gotta go save Carolina first before you do this. Nico's not leaving anyone behind, and she pretty much easily convinces everybody else, uh, Alex being the last one. And not so much convinced, like he doesn't want to go back for him, but I think Alex is trying to be the more practical of the approach. Heading right back into the Church of Gaborum to try and go save Carolina might put them a lot more at risk, certainly more likely to get caught. Um, but 
groups got to stay together, so what else are you going to do? Um, I love them going after Vaughn to try and get him to come in. I mean, first, all the costumes and everything, and the outfits, again, just, just, they're not completely hiding their identities. They're just trying to not look exactly like they normally look. Uh, was it, um, with Gert's hair? Instead of purple hair, we'll give her a green wig. They're expecting someone with purple hair, not someone with green hair. I guess there's a logic to that. It makes sense. Still kind of a funny idea. Um, but yeah, trying to go after Vaughn to get him to help. He's not really volunteering for what? The church has always been there for him. Why would he want to give up? It's, it's, it, it, it gave him something to believe in when he had nothing else. Uh, and they don't necessarily push too hard for him. They talk to him. They get the opportunity. He just kind of shuts them down and walks away. So that sort of leaves them on their own. Um, but acting like runaways themselves is certainly a way to get in. Jump on the Gaborum bus, which is always grabbing kids in the areas. Just go in, fill out some paperwork, figure out what makes you special. And I love that when Vaughn sort of changes his mind or appears to change his mind to go down and help them and pulls them back up to, uh, to go and help, was it Molly and, and Chase there that are filling out the paperwork, and brings them in, and we get the two Gaborum church ladies that looks at the paperwork, is like, oh, you're right, they're very special. Why? I think because of the N.A. Under family, N.A. That means they have nobody. That seems to have been the criteria with all the other sacrifices before the special people that Leslie needed to speak to uh, uh, personally. Uh, and that seems to allow them to go in and step up to try and look out for Carolina. Um, Carolina, on the other hand, at this moment, uh, having a little connection with her dad, who she finds out is, in fact, her dad, Jonah. Uh, I mean, first of all, we've got Carolina wearing the whole creepy fetish glowy mask thing which I guess is healing her uh, somewhat, to a certain extent, getting her conscious up. So yeah, then she pulls that off and there's Jonah. Hi, I am your father. It's doing a whole Darth Vader thing right there with the glowy mask and everything. Really, a lot of Darth Vader vibes going off of Jonah right there in that discussion with Carolina. Uh, certainly an offering to go ahead and teach her again. We got a lot of this whole parent teaching. We had a few episodes ago when we had Tino wanting to teach Nico how to use the staff, and now we've got Jonah wanting to sort of teach his daughter Carolina how to use her abilities. Um, which I guess is a kind offer in a way if he wasn't some sort of murderous, immortal psychopath. Uh, so when Chase and, and Molly show up to bust her out, Ah, uh, she's quite appreciative. I love Molly using her strength there to just rip the door out, and Vaughn's like, all right, I've just seen it. I, I didn't need to. I'm going to go. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> sort of a perfect bit. And then as soon as we get the Gaborum Church people show up, it's time to run, which is exactly what we do. We've got the van pulling up the... Uh, Nico and Gert hit stolen, jump into the back there, and boom, they are on their way to get out of town. Uh, actually, we did have sort of a great moments there. One, we had Gert talking with Nico about her concern that the relationship with Chase, oh, was just a one-time thing. But Nico knows better because she's already talked to Chase, who was like, eh, the problem is I really like Gert. Could be a one night thing, but I, I really like her. So I think that's sort of supporting Gert's anxiousness. She's missing her su emotional support dinosaur. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, we also had sort of a very cool moment I, uh, beforehand when Alex was going to steal the van and he was hiding out right as uh, Jeffrey and, and Catherine come out trying to confront Jonah about going in and talking to Carolina that they want to get some answers and Jonah's like, no, shuts them down just, just tremendously right there. And as they walk out, we've got sort of Alex hiding behind, behind the van there, just walked right past. So 
lot of lot of interactions, a lot of back and forth, and again, a lot of setup here because not only we have the kids on the run, but we can also see the beginnings of the parents pushing back against Jonah. Uh, and in fact, they've got a, a big scene which not only unites them against Jonah, but also reveals a lot more of the secrets uh, we've been waiting to hear. Oh, and real quick, I uh, did appreciate that shot in the stairwell when they're about to run and Chase puts on the x-ray specs to see if they're being followed and spots Jonah as this glowing being of light behind the walls. Yeah, I think that gives a, a further insight into what he actually is, at least for the kids now. So where does that leave us by the end going forward? Well, the parents are uniting to stand up against Jonah. They have realized that uh, Jonah is not really the person they think they are, think that he was. They're certainly not willing to continue to make the moves that Jonah wants to do, and they certainly don't want to sacrifice their kids in order to achieve whatever promises have been well, promised to them. Uh, but we are getting one last revelation, and that, in fact, comes from Leslie with... Everybody putting everything, all their cards on the table. You knew that this had to come. How Leslie lets Tina know that uh, she's kind of responsible for Amy's death. She didn't kill Amy. Jonah did. Uh, but uh, Leslie kind of let Jonah know about uh, Amy, what was going on. Not only when Amy broke into the servers did that alert Tina, but that alerted Jonah as well. Uh, now, apparently, Leslie did try to warn Amy, and that was that final text. He's coming, get out of the house now, uh, was from Leslie to try and warn Amy to get out. Um, but that doesn't really abdicate her from her responsibility, considering that she was working with Jonah at the time and that Jonah is now responsible for Amy's death. So, long thought theory that maybe Tina was behind it, that there was some sacrifice that was done for pride, and I guess in a way it was. I guess it was a sacrifice, just one conducted by Jonah to try and protect his own interests. So, if there is anything more that Tina uh, and Roger need to know to go up against Jonah, that isn't it. Not only they're going after all their kids now, but they're responsible for uh, uh, Amy's death as well. Tina is not someone to cross. She has been on Jonah's side. She's always been there, but Jonah rules by fear, and now the parents are motivated by much, much more. The kids, on the other hand, they are ready to run. Though for Alex, not quite yet. He makes one last call to Darius, uh, for some money and a gun in exchange for what? That is a question that is sort of left unanswered. Uh, in their conversation, Alex just brings up, well, I should we talk? Well, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, alluding, of course, that Jeffrey, the Wilder parents, are both of their enemies, and that makes them buddies, that makes them allies. What else Alex had promised to Darius we don't get to know that's something we'll have to find out in season two, but it does give Alex a roll of cash and a gun, which gets the kids ready to catch the bus and to get out of town, which would have been a great plan, except that the parents had a plan on their own. Molly, of course, has run away from Graciela, so now she they put an Amber Alert out for Molly, last seen in the company of a group of friends, the rest of the kids who are now being implicated in Destiny's death. So now they've got the police looking for them. They got their faces plastered all over the news. They're not catching any bus. Their only choice now is to get out of there as quickly as they can. They've got to run with the dinosaur quickly in tow. So Runaways is a group name. Now very, very applicable. Oh, and we did, of course, find out that Vaughn was helping the kids on the order of Leslie, who again is fighting back against Jonah, who 
is bonding further on with Frank, and they're looking to make plans to uh, uh, take the church forward, or at least their relationship forward, Victor being a very important part of that. So, a lot of background action going on at the Church of Gaborum also. So, that wraps things up for Season 1. So, Season 2, which is starting out just almost now, very shortly, uh, we'll probably be picking things up right where we are here. We've got the kids on the run, but still on a mission to stop this disaster from happening and destroying this city. We have the parents, Pride, that are working to find their kids, certainly have their names plastered all over the police and probably FBI and the news and everything else, using all of their resources to find the kids to stop them or to protect them from Jonah, because Pride's also going to be going after Jonah, who has his own goals in getting at whatever it is that's alive and glowing down there underneath the construction site. So, a lot of irons and a lot of fires, a lot of different goals, a lot of different plans, and there's going to be a lot of action going on. Forward. The previews for season two look amazing, and it looks like they're just going to be ratcheting everything up. I cannot wait. So, hopefully, you will be able to join me with those reviews as well. I'm not sure right now if I'm going to be doing singular reviews like I did with this one, or I'm going to be doing chunks of reviews, several episodes all at once. It's the holiday season. I know they're dropping all the episodes at once. So it's just like any binge-watching bit, but we've got Christmas right afterwards, so time-wise I'm still sort of juggling and figuring out what's going to go on. But we will get Season 2 reviews coming out. Just pay attention to the channel, and you won't miss them. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye, and thank you once again for joining me with all of these Season 1 reviews. I hope you enjoyed them also. And if you did like this review, you know, as usual, go ahead and hit that like button. Thoughts, ideas, and comments, just toss those right down in the section below. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram, at Darren Jakes. You can press this button to subscribe, and right here we'll have a couple of old, older reviews you can check out. So, that's going to be it for me. I'm D, and I'm out of here. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.